to your rest, may you allow your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us, that you will come down and dwell with us and reveal to us your love and your truth, and that we may walk away refreshed to tackle another week, and that you will give us your strength, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Are we all happy to be here? Yes. You don't sound it. Are we all happy to be here? Yes. We can do better than that. Are we all happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen. That's better. Are we ready uh, to, to blow this roof with our voices as we sing praises to our Lord? Okay, so as our custom, we're going to invite one another. Invite somebody who's next to you um, or somebody who is far from you, somebody we haven't seen from last Sabbath because I know we, some of us, we last saw each other last Sabbath. Some of us saw each other yesterday, but still, you still need to welcome one another. So as we do, let's go around greeting each other as we sing our welcome song. Okay? Welcome in this place. Welcome in this place. We offer you the highest praise. Welcome in this place. Welcome in this place. Welcome in this place. We offer you the highest praise. Welcome in this place. Amen. Amen. So our first hymn, as we return to our seats, our first hymn is hymn number 618, 618, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift up his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. And Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day, he that a brave now save him. Against the number falls, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus and in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Put on the gospel armor, each piece puts on with prayer, where duty calls or danger be ever wanting them. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, that's right. Oh, 
shall be there with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Amen. Our next song is going to be two, four, five. Two, four, five. More about Jesus. More about Jesus I would know, more of his sin to others show, more of his failing fullness more of his love who died for me, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. Saving fullness, see more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will descend. Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things. Of Christ to me, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness, more of His love who died for me. Let's hear the gentleman only. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with the Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying man. Everybody, more, more about Jesus, more. Ladies, more about Jesus on his throne, riches in glory of his own. More of his kingdom shall increase, more of his coming brings of peace. Let's join them. More, more about Jesus. More of his love who died for me. Shall we all stand for our intro, please? There is a sweet I know. Sanctuary, God. 
Sovereign Lord, we are before your presence this wonderful Sabbath morning. Lord, we pray that may you help us, may you speak unto us in a very special way, that Lord, we may hear the stillness of your voice, even in our human weaknesses. And we pray that Lord, may you enlighten us, may you enlighten our understanding and our perception of the word of truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, each and everyone. Happy Sabbath. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Don't forget the Sabbath of the Lord. Yes, of all the wings the birds it brings reports from labor. It tells of joy divine. It beams of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. I hope we had a good week, and I hope we were all blessed. Did we manage to bless someone in a, during the week? Um, if so, may God continue blessing you, because the blessing that you give out is the blessing that will be replaced. Um, uh, also, I would also like to, you know, Welcome our new visitors. Are there any new visitors in this, in our church? If you can raise your hands. Yes, ma'am. Um, who else? New visitors? You can introduce yourself. Yeah, yes. There's mom, two, our two moms there. Uh, you just tell us who, your name and where you come from. I'm Chied Zamkomana from Zimbabwe, Chitungwis. Amen, amen. My name is uh, Mercy Magellante. I'm from Botswana. I'm just visiting at the moment. Amen. amen. Can we give them a hearty welcome as well? Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, thank you. I would like to welcome all the regular visitors and our regular church members. We'll be happy in the, in, the, in the house of the Lord. Let's get all the blessings. The Holy Spirit is within us, and we can listen to the word of God as we are given, and so that we can go out into the world and show, be the light of the world. Because God asks us to serve and to ask for his soon coming. Thank you very much. Uh, we can stand with uh, our opening hymn number... Two eight seven. Yes. Can we all send up even number two eight seven? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Still on the post house is waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you are weary, come home, home. endlessly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, 
Message for you and for me. Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. And the sweet and early Jesus is calling, calling for sinner, come home. Of the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. be seated. Next, next is uh, our main prayer from our brother Richard. Shall we get a reverent posture and we shall have a word of prayer. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we come unto you this morning with thanksgiving for ye have been gracious and merciful unto your, to our lives. Now, God, you've gathered us into your own house. Far from wide, your children have come. We say thank you for the Sabbath and we now want to claim every blessing that you promise that you shall bestow unto your people who come into your, world, to your house for worship and the blessings of the Sabbath. We bring with ourselves uh, the tough burdens of the week. We bestow them unto you. And we do choose to take your, your yoke because your yoke is lighter. Now, dear Heavenly Father, for those who are not feeling well, God, we pray for your healing, healing powers. You may touch them. You are the great physician. And our speaker today, God, we bring him into your hands, that he may only speak that which he has purpose that your children shall hear. As we walk out of this place, shall we be more blessed than we came in? For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath. Okay, it's time for tithe and offering. 
and as we invite the deacons to come uh, in front to collect the tithe and offerings, I'll read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8. And it says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace bound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. May the deacons please come forward as we correct tithe and offering. Above all, may we give our hearts, please, to the Lord. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. The Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. The Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give them. The Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength to go and work. And dear God, we want to thank you for giving us even opportunity to find work. Father, as we have returned, but of what you've blessed us with, we pray that God May, you, may it be used according to your will to hasten the work in your vineyard. Dear God, bless the hands that have given, and may you also bless those who, have, who haven't been able to give today so that, God, next time they'll come and give. Above all, Father, we pray that, God, may we give our hearts unto you. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
children's story from Sister Karen Mwebe. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color is just right, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color is just right, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children of the children of the world. Every color is just right there, precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Little children, all oh, the children of the world. Every color is just right. They are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Happy Sabbath, children. Happy Sabbath. Wow, ah, that was so loud. Uh, happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, today we are going to have a very short story from the Bible uh, in the book of Daniel. Uh, a story is told in the Bible of four young men who lived far away. Who lived far? Uh, that's not far. That's very close. Let's go. Who lived away and they lived a very very long time ago let's go a very very long time ago that's great so these boys were taken into captivity and they were taken by King Nebuchadnezzar do you still remember King Nebuchadnezzar who remembers King Nebuchadnezzar that's great uh, so they were taken there into Babylon, to a land called Babylon. So in this uh, land, they had their customs, they had their culture, they had their diet, which was very much different from, uh, uh, the, from the country which these boys came from. So it happened that this is the time the king prepared a banquet for the boys and there were a lot a lot and lots and lots of food can you please mention some foods that you know that are served, are served in the hotels uh, at parties or wherever that you know yes chicken yes chips yes yeah, she's still thinking. What else? Yes. Rice, yes. What? Twigs. Drinks, okay. Yes, drinks are served. Yes. Potatoes, yes. What else? Yes. Fruits, yeah. Uh, among those foods, uh, there were beef, yes. Vegetables, yes. Yes, that's true. So there were there was beef, there was uh, some prawns. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, there were lots and lots of food served at uh, the king's table. But these boys, looking at the food, they say, "Ha! We don't eat. We don't eat this kind of food." Do we have some kinds of food that you, you and your parents don't eat at home? Can you tell me those foods that you don't eat at home? Yes. What? 
Yes, junk food. They don't eat junk food. Yeah, that's true. What else? Ham, yes. They don't eat ham. And we also, uh, I guess we also don't eat ham here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's still thinking. Yes, Malakai. Prawns, yes. We don't eat prawns. So that was also served at the king's table. These boys looking at the table, they said, oh, no, we can't eat this. You better give us uh, some vegetables and some water so that we can, we can eat. They didn't want to defy themselves with the, uh, the junk food, the bad food which they were given uh, by the by the king. Can someone read for, for us from Daniel chapter 1 verse 8? Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Can you say ahead? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Let's listen carefully, is it? Let's listen carefully. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says, yeah. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Yes. What did Daniel do? What did Daniel do? Were you listening? Oh, come on. What did Daniel do? Daniel and his friends refused to eat of uh, the king's food because he said that I will not defile myself with this bad food. You kids, you must do as well. Uh, please, uh, may you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 as well. So, we must not just eat. If we are given food, let's not just eat. Are we together, kids? Let's not just eat anything. You are given prawns, you eat. You are given, given any type of meat, you eat. You are given any type of drink, you just drink. You must first ask, what are the contents of this drink? Ah, this meat I don't eat. I don't eat harm. I don't eat prawns. There are so many kinds of food that we don't eat. So, kids, we must not eat all those things that God said we must not eat. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Let's listen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Yeah. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. So, from now onwards, everything you are going to do, be it eating, playing, sharing, singing, whatever you are going to do, the Bible says, do it to the glory of God. Let's do it again. Let's do it in the glory of Yes, so we please God in everything we, we do. That's our Bible story for today. Who wants to pray for us? Yes, Malachi, today you're going to pray for us. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for helping us to get to church. And thank you for helping us um, to listen to the children's story. And thank you for um, helping us to not eat um, things that we can't eat. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Thank you, Sister, Car uh, Sister Courage. Thank you. Um, next is uh, building up the church, the temple. Okay, everybody, we do this every week now, don't we? Um, just to mention, as I did last week, that we're all singing the same thing, and we're not singing different things. We're going we're gonna, to um, we're going to mention children, ladies, and men. Children, ladies, and men. And you know the tune. Building up the temple. Building, building up, up the, the temple, temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Children like to help us, children like to help us, building up the temple of the Lord. What are we doing? Children, children like come and help us, building up the temple of the Lord. Come on, children, roll up. Every children penny counts. Like All going for a good cause like is to build our new temple. Building up the temple of the Lord. Building up the temple. Building up the temple. Building up the temple of the Lord. What are we doing? Building up the temple. Indeed we are. Building up the temple. Building up the temple of the Lord. We are building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. We need bricks, we need mortars. Ladies like to help us, ladies like to help us, building up the temple of the Lord. We are building up the temple, building up the temple. Come on, ladies. Building up the temple. I know you want to help the Lord. Every penny ladies counts. Like to help us. All ladies for a good like cause. To help us. Thank you, ladies. The temple of the Lord. We are building, building up, up the temple. Building up the temple. Building up the temple of the Lord. Give on. <laughs> Men like to help us. Men <laughs> like to help us. Building up the temple of the Lord, we are building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Men like to help us, men like to help us, building up the temple of the Lord. Anyway, thank you very much, church. Have a wonderful Sabbath, and thanks for your participation. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 6, verses 24 and 28. And it reads, And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in Im immediately and with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought him his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tapi. Uh, we can stand up with our meditational song. Is uh, hymn number 159. Meditational hymn number 159. Is, is the women's choir available anyway? Yes. Are you in numbers? <laughs> yes. Anyway, okay, let's have the women's choir there. <laughs> Just crazy. 
servant of God, Elder Daniel. Um, I always remember of this story when he says, you know, he stood up in a bus and started to preach. And uh, so, you know, we welcome uh, Elder Daniel. He's from Kenya. So please welcome him and let's listen to the word of God. Thank you. Abi Sabbath. Please have the other mic, please. Thank you. God is good all the time. time. Can we wave at one another? Happy Sabbath. So, that side you didn't wave. Don't you want to see me before your face? Happy Sabbath. So, uh, I thank God for yet another opportunity and yet another Sabbath that is given us that we should uh, gather and uh, encourage one another. And the Bible says in uh, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 that encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. Lest none of you be hardened by the deceit deceitfulness of sin. So for that reason, I believe God has gathered us today and I want to invite each and every one of us so that we can pray together and uh, pray for me so that it may not be about me because I know in, uh, I don't have anything to give you. But if uh, Christ is lifted up, be sure we shall all be drawn unto him. So let us pray. Our loving God, you who is mighty and powerful, you who is the giver of life, Lord, we come before you. We are sinful, we are wretched, and we are helpless. Lord, we call upon your name that, Lord, you should come and speak unto us. Lord, I pray that may you use me according to your own glory. And Lord, that may you be lifted up. Because if you be lifted up, you said you will draw all men unto yourself. Lord, as we open the Holy Scriptures, I we pray that may you broaden our understanding. May you enlighten our spiritual faculties so that we may discern that which is your will and do it. Be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, our message today So, our message today uh, is drawn from uh, the book of Mark chapter 6 and it's one of uh, the common story and I know in the discourse of uh, our lessons we have uh, read the scriptures and also we have discussed uh, other discussions on the same. So today, uh, my focus is on uh, Mark chapter 6. My focus is on Mark chapter 6 uh, from verse uh, from verse 17 through verse 28. And our key text is, the party is over. And uh, we all know 
who John the Baptist was. And we all know that John the Baptist was the one who was sent to prepare the way for the Lord. And uh, by the time John the Baptist came, or by the time that uh, John the Baptist was born, born there had been a, a, a period of about 400 years of silence. In other words, from the time of Malachi to the time of John, there was a period of 400 years, about 400 years, in which the children of Israel never had any prophet in the midst of them. Yes, they had the servants of God ministering to them, but there was not a prophet that was born uh, to serve them and to give them direct message from the Lord. And then comes uh, this man of God, John the Baptist. And this guy was born with a, a, a message that was meant to prepare the people to receive Jesus Christ. And so, when his mother conceived him, special uh, instructions were given to his parents regarding on how they could uh, bring him up. Because he was to be prepared for a special mission. And the Bible says that when he was of age, he started his ministry in the wilderness. This is all I know you know. You know all these things. So he started his ministry in the wilderness. What was his message? To prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. And therefore he was calling people to repent. He was calling people to forsake their sins. And also he was calling people to awaken to the great event that was coming, was, taking, was soon to take place. That is the coming of Jesus. And so, John was a powerful speaker. And the Bible says that uh, he lived in the wilderness. He was dressed in uh, camel's hair. And also, he ate honey and locusts. So he was a unique man of God. And uh, the Bible says, he never did any miracle. So if you read in uh, the scriptures, you will not find uh, at any place where it is written that John did any miracle. No, he didn't do any miracle. But one thing that is for sure he had a straight message. And his message was very powerful. If you read in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 3, uh, the Bible says that people flocked to the wilderness to listen to his message. Not because he had any unique feature. Not because of his uh, adornments. Not because of uh, his physical appearance. But because the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Praise the Lord. And therefore when this man stood up, he stood up with a straight message. He stood up to give the message with courage. He stood up to give the message with power. And his message was irresistible. His message was cutting down. It was a message that was reaching deep down in the consciences of men. It was a message that brought a great awakening. And the Bible says that many flocked to the wilderness to listen to him. It's, it speaks of the scribes. It speaks of the Pharisees. It is, speaks of the people who have low status in the society. They all flocked to the wilderness to listen to this man of God. And as they came to him, they came to him inquiring, what then should we do? And then John's message was that repent and be baptized. And so, 
the Bible also says that as, uh, as they flocked to the wilderness and uh, everybody was persuaded, I believe that everyone was convicted deep down that indeed this was a servant of God. And you can imagine this man of God, he was not living with people. He was living in the wilderness, a place that was, uh, some will say, desolate, a place that was uh, 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 away from towns. And then he had a special lifestyle. But then, it is amazing that people of all status in the society flocked to the wilderness to listen to him. And among those people that flocked to listen to him were people who held political positions. And among such were Herod Pontius, who the Bible refers to as the Theatrach of Galilee. He was the ruler of Galilee. He was somebody who he was less powerful because his seat was somehow ceremonial in nature. Yes, he had some power, but he did not have absolute power. In other words, he, he, was, able, he was not able to do much because his power was given by the Romans. So he was directly answerable to Caesar. So, and uh, this guy was uh, the ruler over Galilee. So he was ruling the Jews. And uh, this guy, he also heard of John the Baptist. And I believe he also might have gone to the wilderness to listen to him. But the thing is, John did not spare anybody. John had a straight message. In fact, when you read in, uh, uh, when you read in uh, Isaiah concerning his prophecy, Isaiah chapter, is it chapter 40? When you read of his prophecy, I invite you to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. I invite you to the book of Isaiah. When you read chapter 40, when you read Isaiah chapter 40, When you read Isaiah chapter 40 from uh, verse 2, verse 3, a prophecy is given of John as the voice of one crying, uh, crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight uh, in the desert a highway for the Lord. And then uh, his voice was uh, that every, every valley shall be exalted, every mountain shall, uh, and hill shall be brought low, every crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. So his message was a cutting message. It was a message that was meant to call people of all caribas to prepare their hearts to receive the Lord. And so, among those people, who were influenced by the message of this servant of God, as I have said, was this guy, Herod. And this Herod, he was somebody who, as I have said, was less powerful, but by the fact that he had uh, this power vested upon him by the Romans, or by the Roman government, he had say in uh, this place over which he governed. And... Uh, one day, John also gave him a direct rebuke. Why? Because he had forsaken his wife. Herodias had forsaken his wife. And then he had taken another wife who was his brother's wife. By the name Herodias. So John had given him the straight message that whatever that you are doing, leaving your... Uh, leaving, forsaking your wife and taking your brother's wife is not right. But 
John was con uh, Herod was convicted. He knew that this message, this is a servant of God. And uh, his heart was troubled because his message was a message filled with power. And a Lord wanted so much to forsake this relationship. But you know what? Herodias could not let him do so. And do you know who Herodias was? Herodias was a wife to his brother, Philip. And also Herodias was a daughter to one of their stepbrothers. So who was Herodias to Philip? He was, he, who was Herodias to uh, Herod? He was the daughter of one of his brothers, stepbrothers. Are we together, church? So you can see how the matrix was complex. Number one, Herod, the king, has left his wife. He has taken his brother's wife, who is also his brother's daughter. So the message of, the message of God comes with a straight message. He tells him, if we go back to uh, Mark chapter 6, he tells him in verse 17, oh, not in verse 17, he tells him in verse 18 that it is not lawful for you to live your, for, for you to uh, have your brother's wife. So, the spirit of prophecy says, this straight message, it had a great impact on Herod. And he really wanted to do something about it. He wanted to put her away, but he was not able to do. He was so much bound by this evil woman, to the extent that it was too much for him to forsake her. And so, this affair continued for a long, time, a long time. Every time, day after day, whenever he could hear about John the Baptist, whenever he could uh, go about his businesses, every time uh, this king could see this uh, woman, he was convicted that he's doing the wrong thing. He's not supposed to stay with this woman. But then, the woman was so powerful to him, he could not let her go. And you know what? When you read in verse 10, the Bible says, For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just and holy man, and he protected him. And when he had him, he did many things and had him gladly. Can you read verse 20? The Bible says that he feared John. Why? Because he knew that he was a just man. Number two, he knew that he was a holy man. And also the Bible says that he protected him. And also the Bible also says that and when he had him, he did many things and had him gladly. So, was Herod a part of John's audience? I'm asking you, church, was Herod a part of John's audience? The Bible says that he had him gladly. Have we not read so? And again, the Bible says that he feared John because he knew he was a just and honest and righteous man. And beyond that, the Bible says that he always sought to protect him. So that speaks volumes in the sense that this direct message that was sent to Herod, Herod came with power and conviction. Are we together, church? So when this rebuke came, 
It came with power and conviction. That's why he sought to protect him. Because if you read the verse before, in uh, that's verse 19, the Bible says Herodias held it against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. So in other words, from the day when uh, the rebuke came out, and this lady Herodias had, he sought to kill the servant of God, John. But then, the Bible says that Herod protected him because he knew that he was a just and righteous man. And the Bible says that even, even he always had him gladly. So he used to flock into his meetings, sit and listen to him because he believed that he was a man from God and Herod wanted to do what is right. He wanted to uh, follow the Lord. Because the Lord was speaking to him through the servant of God, John. The Lord was trying to speak to his conscience, direct him towards, directing him towards what is right. But then, there was this stumbling block. Are we together, church? Who was the stumbling block? Elodius. So the Bible says that he did many things and he had him gladly. In other words, he enjoyed listening to him. He did not enjoy listening to him because John was entertaining. No. John was having a straight message that was coming out with conviction, that was coming out with power, that was coming out powered by the Holy Spirit. Even when you read about his message, his message was direct. The Bible says, one day the scribes went to him, asking him, what do we do? And then he was telling them, you brood of fibers, who told you to flee from the coming judgment? So his message was so effectious that this king really wanted to change. He desired to change his life. He saw something beyond the, this man dressed in some humble attires. He saw something beyond this man adorned with, the, with camel's, uh, camel's hair. He saw something beyond this man living in the desert. He saw something beyond this man living a life that you can say, uh, you, you can, you can uh, say as a life that was a withdrawn life from people. He saw somebody full of the Holy Spirit, somebody having the message from God, and somebody who, whose word could bring a difference. Praise the Lord. And so, he sought so much to protect him from now this uh, second wife, as we may say. So the Bible says, that he always sought to protect him. You can imagine, every time, it might be that this man was troubled. Even in his house, you might find that, or it, might, it must have been that, he was not a happy man. From the time he had John rebuking him, he must be a man of, a, a, a man who was stressed, who was always wondering, scratching, he said, what can I do? How can I get myself out of this mess? What can I do to redeem my life? But then, this Herod has prevailed over him. And you can imagine, maybe they might have, conversa uh, they might have had conversations in their bedroom. You might find uh, uh, maybe Herod had tried to talk to us sobody, telling her, by the way, after all, you are my sister. You are, you, you are my, is it my nephew? My niece. You are my niece. And uh, furthermore, this is my brother. I think what the prophet is saying is right. 
Why can't we separate? Yes, I am a king, but I can help you even secure a house. I can finance your lifestyle so that you maintain your status quo, but we don't live together. But then, this lady, you can hear a whisper and tell him, no, it will not be possible. And so this man was chained. He was chained. He was miserable. He was horrified by the coming judgment. But he was helpless. He was not determined enough to let her loose. He was enslaved. In verse 21 says, Then an opportune day came when Herod on his birthday gave a feast for his nobles, the high officers and the chief men of Galilee. So, every day, this enlisted wife was looking for an opportunity to kill John. But the Bible said that she was not able to because the king could not allow. But then she kept on pestering him day after day, telling him, get rid of this man. Get, this of, get rid of this man. Until John succumbed to him. Oh, not John. Until Herod succumbed to her and reluctantly ordered her to be put in prison. But even when he was in prison, Herod commanded the, uh, the, the prison guards not to touch him. So you can imagine, because this was a, 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 a mischievous uh, woman, she might have sneaked to the prison and tried to lure the prison wardeners to do something to get rid of this servant of God. But then because the king was powerful, this man could not listen to the lady. So, the king was troubled. He was greatly troubled. Even from prison. While John is in, in prison, the king is in his palace for almost one year. His life was troubled. And as I have told you from the day he had that message, his life was never the same. Because once you have known the light, you can no longer be in darkness. So his conscience was troubled. And I read something somewhere that uh, the conscience of uh, uh, that is a sinner's accuser, the greatest accuser of a sinner is his own conscience. And it says that the conscience is keener. There is nothing that, is, that can molest you keenly and seriously than a troubled conscience. And so you can imagine this king suffering torments, spending sleepless nights, wondering, oh, what a mistake I did. I took my brother's wife, who is my niece, and then beyond that, I have made that family, uh, I have broken uh, my brother's family, I have left my wife, I have taken the servant of God, who was doing the Lord's work, I have bound him in chains, I have put him in a dungeon, oh, what can I do to set him free? And then beyond that, there is this pestering woman troubling me day and night. She's a thorn in my flesh. Whoa, what can I do? But then, Herod, Herodias continued persisting. And she tried to find opportunities to kill the servant of God. 
And the Bible as it has said in verse 21, an opportune day came. And Herod, as knowing that it is the king's party day, she said to her heart, the devil spoke to her and said, this is the day. I will do all that I can so that I may have my way. And at last, I silence the servant of God. So you can imagine her in their private chambers talking to the king, trying to tell him, you know, it is your party day. You can do something about it. But the king was reluctant. Elod was devising a plan. Elod was devising a plan. She was telling her, don't worry. I will plan everything for you. Don't worry. I will call the nobles, the chief men of Galilee. I will make sure that the event is glorious. You relax. So you can imagine her planning this event to celebrate his party day. But then she was trapping him. She wanted to confuse him so that he may not be sober, so that his judgment may be, uh, may be confused, so that his mind may be, may be numbed, so that she may find a way and then she will do whatever she wanted. So on this very day, the feasting began. His nobles were seated. The high officers were seated. The chief uh, officers of Galilee were seated. And then, drinks were brought. Drinks that were meant to make sure that the passions find way. And then food was brought that was meant to ensure that the mind is clogged. And then music was put in place that was meant to ensure that every faculty of the body, mind and soul, is let loose. So that the king and his nobles may give themselves in to the orgy of pleasure. What a sad day. The king did not know this. So, you can imagine, you can see the uh, Herodias seated somewhere, reading the king, supplying drink after drink, bringing one type of wine after another. You can see her trying to tell the DJs to, to, to fine tune to bring the music that were meant to lure them, that were meant to uh, make them uh, forget everything and release themselves fully to dance, to song, and to dance to the tide. And then passion was held sway, and reason was dethroned. And then, in the midst of uh, that pleasure, this woman is watching, and she knew that usually when there are such events, the king, if she is, he is happy, will always reward the people that embrace him most. So you can see this lady, Herodias, as this event is coming to a climax, you can see her taking her daughter, Salome, aside, and trying to induce her and entice her with some gifts and some, uh, some, some, some uh, false praises. She's telling her, my girl, come on. I want you to do something for me. I want you to go and dance. Come on, this is the day. And then she dressed this girl who was about 15 or 16 years. She dressed her in, in some dazzling clothes. She, 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 uh, she, uh, they put her all ornaments that were glittering. And then 
her body was revealing to a great extent. And then now, she sends off the girl to dance before the king. So as the girl is dancing before the king, she is watching. And because of these drinks, because of uh, this orgy of pleasure, and because now the king's mental faculties have been compromised, the king was excited. And for a moment, he thought that it is him that mattered. His bride was, ma bride was massaged. His ego was ignited. And in that moment, he felt at his peak of glory and pomp. And then, in carelessness, he rose up and says, Ask whatever that you want. I can give you even to half of my kingdom. What a reckless comment or a pledge. And because the mother was on purpose, she had told the girl in, instead, in case you had asked for anything, come and inquire from me. So she quickly ran to her mother. And then she asked her mother, what do I ask for from the king? And then she said, John's head. Do you picture the party? Do you see the conversations, the laughter, the carelessness? Do you see people, how they have fully released themselves into pleasure? You can see the excitement. You can see the confusion. You can see the drinks brought with glittering vessels, utensils. You can see everything was pomp and glory. And then the girl comes with that inious request that I want John's head immediately. Did you mark that? What verse is it? In verse 25. Immediately she came in with Esther to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on the platter. At once. So you can imagine with all that display, with all that glory, when it was at the climax and everybody was singing, Hail the King, everybody was singing praises to him, that girl comes with Inia's request and she says she wants it immediately. Oh. Then the king realized too late that he had made a mistake. He realized too late that he had fallen captive to the snares of this heinous, evil lady. And you know, he had pledged himself, he had, he had given an oath by himself, by, by his guests. In other words, he said, for the sake of my guests who have come here to grace my glorious event, I will do it. So he had no choice. What a sad moment for him. And then he realized, and he was astonished and confounded. And then parting ceased. All the music stopped at once. All the partings, all the dances, all the glory, all, 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 the, all the happiness, all the conversations, everything that was, that was appealing at that moment, that was, they all ceased. And there was silence. And the king remembered this, this servant once more. He remembered him going to the wilderness and listening to him. He remembered people flocking to him. He remembered how powerful his message was over his life. But then he was helpless. 
he, there was a moment of silence and the king wished somebody to say something those guests for whom he had met the oath by whom he had met the oath he, ex, he, he looked forward for them to say something he looked forward for somebody to stand up and say hey come on that's a servant of God nobody said anything and do you know what these great men of Galilee some were strict followers of uh, John. Some were those who liked him. But at this moment, because their, uh, uh, because their minds and their mental faculties were not functioning properly, and because Satan had won it, they could not say anything. And then because... Everybody was silent, and now the king was horror stricken, and nobody gave, uh, came uh, to speak on the prisoner's behalf. The king reluctantly said, commanded the executioners, the, ex the executioner, to go at once and bring the head of John. So you can imagine they're all silent. And now you can hear the footsteps of the executioners. Father, awakening their consciences. Father, uh, increasing the heaviness of their, uh, their hearts. You can hear the whole hall that was in a few moments parting, now is silent. You can hear the executioner making footsteps going to the other side of the palace. To execute, to execute the servant of God. And as the executioner went, the king lived in his heart. Oh, what a mistake have I done. But then, within a minute, the executioner came with that head of the servant of God. You can imagine, it had just been cut and brought because he said you wanted it at once. So you can see the head bleeding. You can see life still in that body, in that head. You can see the servant of God struggling to die. But then it was too late. It was too late. It was too late. And then everybody started walking out. And, and you know what? The scholars say that it was their custom that if there is somebody whom you don't like, or the king uh, who was executed, some kings, they were heinous, they were so bad, so evil, so notorious that they kill somebody and then they bring the body. And what they could do is they could take the tongue out and they could try to, eh? they gorge the eyes, they do some evil things. So, Elodias took that body, smiling that I have finally won. I have finally silenced the man of God. And then she did the same. She took the, she brushed the, 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 the tongue out. She punched the eyes. And then she was celebrating in her heart, oh, I have won. But then from that moment onwards, she never lived a happy life. She thought that now I have silenced the servant of God for once and forever. But what do you think were the effects? The party ended suddenly. It came to a standstill. Everybody went away wondering. Those people who were there, they went away pondering of the life of this servant of God, of how powerful he had been, of the message that he had preached. And even the man of God, um, Herod, Herod, he was a troubled man from that day henceforth. But then they had sealed their faith to be saved forever. And that is what Satan does. When Satan comes to, your, uh, to our lives, the Bible says that he's like a lion seeking somebody to defer. And the devil comes with entice, enticements. 
and then he comes into our lives and then he, he entangles us with things that we love. And then once he takes us captive, he has nothing to do with us. He makes sure he leaves us in a state of hopelessness, a state of misery, misery and a state of uh, 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 a state where we are beyond help. The best thing that we can do as we finish this uh, message, the best thing that we can do once we have heard the voice of God is to obey. The moment you hear the message of God, like this uh, Herod eh, had the message of God. He was convicted that he's a servant of God. He was convicted that this message was meant to rebuke and correct him. And he really wanted to be corrected. But he lingered too long. He always he looked forward to be least. But he never had the courage to move forward because of this woman. He wanted freedom. He wanted to dwell in the presence of God. He wanted to hear the words of life spoken to him. But he was bound by this woman. What is this that binds us from following Jesus? What is this that binds you from making that very important decision to follow Christ? Is it because of your spouse? Is it because of your friend? Is it because of your family? Is it because of your family associations? If you hear the message of the Lord, the spirit of prophecy says, once you hear the message of the Lord, it speaks, God speaks in thunderstorms. His voice is heard for the first time in thunderstorms. But the more you linger, without making that decision, in the value of decision, that message will continue dying away. And the second time you hear that message, it will not be stronger as it was. At that time, it will not be stronger. And it will come to a point where that message becomes ordinary. The message that was once captivating you, the message that was once uh, 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 speaking directly to your conscience, now no longer becomes a bother to you. That's why the Bible says those people who have once been saved, who have tested the fruit, the power of God, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, if they go away, if they sleep and fall back, it is hard to redeem them back. That's why you will find an, an, an Adventist who was once a staunch Christian, who was once a, prophet, a spirit of prophet teacher, once they fell away, they start, when they start, they start, you go to speak to them, but they start preaching to you. There is nothing that you will speak to them. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, verse 1 and 2, that behold, now is the acceptable time. The Lord says that in the time, in the acceptable time, if you call, he will hear you. And then he says, now is the acceptable time. Because there is no other time that is more acceptable than that time when you hear the message of God with conviction. Because that is the very, very moment that God is speaking to you. That's why those people who want to make some decisions, even you, you know yourselves. Everybody knows himself. There is a time you heard the Lord's message. And you really were convicted towards a certain direction. But then you lingered too long. Now you desire the Lord to speak to you, but you don't hear him any longer. And you find yourself struggling with things. Asking yourself, what can I do? How can I do to be set free? But you don't know. You are bound. But the good news is that Jesus says that even today, I'm able to save to the utmost. And then he says... That all come unto me, all that labor, and are heavy laden, that I may give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, because my yoke is easy, and you shall find rest in your soul. So my request as we uh, pray this afternoon is that we need to hearken to the Lord's voice. Because the Lord is calling, and the Lord is always calling. And he says... 
If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Because so did the children of Israel in the wilderness. And God destroyed them. How, for how long will we linger from making this very important decision? And do you know what Joel says? He says multitudes, multitudes in the value of decision making. And yet the day of the Lord is at hand. For how long will you be in the valley of decision making? You want to move forward, but you still want to remain where you are. You want to go forward, but you still say, oh, wait a minute, I will do something. I will do later. I will do tomorrow. Are you assured of tomorrow? Tomorrow is in the full, in, is only in fools. Procrastination is the art of Satan to make sure he will sway, uh, he will hold us back from receiving the Savior. And do you know what? Ellen G. White says, many who profess to be Christians will die while hoping to be saved. Many will die while hoping to be saved. You really want to be set free. You really want to be set free. And you know what to do to be set free. But you are hoping for some miracle to happen so that you can make that decision. It is better for you to do that message, that decision today. Because today is the acceptable time. Now is the day of your salvation. So may we all rise up as we sing our closing hymn. And as we sing that hymn, I call upon each and every one of us to meditate upon the love of God. Because the Bible says that God is good. He does not deal with us according to how our sins deserve. That's why if God could deal with us, can you imagine if God could expose each and every one of us? Who could be able to stand? Nobody. But God conceals our weaknesses. God conceals our, our wickedness. God conceals our, our evil deeds, giving us opportunity. Because the Bible says he does not want anybody to die, but all to come to salvation. Why should we linger? So as we sing this song, I'm giving us, uh, God is giving us an opportunity. That if it is your desire, and you know what binds you, you know what you need to be set free from. If you really desire God to set free you free in Jesus' name, I am requesting that as we sing, please move forward. And do not be ashamed. Do not be a coward like Herod. Just be. Move forward so that we pray together. Because he says there is power in the blood. There is power to save. Thank you. I wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home.
Let's pray. Our dear Sovereign Lord, you is mighty and powerful. You is able to save to the utmost all that come to you through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we come hiding ourselves under Jesus because, Lord, we know that in us there is nothing good that exists. Oh, Lord, may you help us. Lord, we thank you for your message that has come unto us at this opportunity opportune time that Lord we should make this very important decision to follow you Lord and to follow you holy how we pray that Lord may you help us Lord look at us we are weak we are made of flesh and blood we are bound to fall because of sin and temptations of Satan how we pray that Lord may you keep us because you've promised in your word that you are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your Father in that great day. Oh Lord, we trust your promises. We trust your saving grace. We trust your love. Lord, we hope that you will make us victorious because of your blood that was shed for us. Dear Lord, before you are your children, they have come in response to your voice. And Lord, we all want to be changed. We all want the strength to move on or to move away from the things that are binding us. Lord, help us. Remove the spirit of cowardice. Give us the spirit of courage. Give us the spirit of perseverance, persistence, and pressing on. Dear Lord, before you are presented young children, some of whom have known, not known even to call upon your name. Lord, may you have mercy upon them this afternoon. Lord, before you are women who are our mothers, who are our grandmothers, who are our sisters, who are our siblings. Lord, we pray for them that Lord, you may help them also in their spiritual endeavor. In that spirit, Lord, we remember our brothers, men here who are our fathers, who are our brothers, who and our fellow co-workers in Christ, how we pray for them, that Lord, you may also remember them this afternoon. We also remember the youths who are in the valley of decision making. Some are planning to get married. Some are still looking for spouses. Lord, help them to avoid in your settled years. 
Lord, help them to make that very important decision that we honor and glorify your name. Lord, even in this congregation, there are many who are grieving because of their past mistakes. Lord, give them the strength to trust in your word that you are able to forget our past and open a new chapter for us. Because, Lord, you promised that all that are in you are new creatures. Because the old has gone and the new has come. Lord, even in the midst of us, there might be one or two who are desiring to be baptized through immersion in many waters as a sign of acknowledging your death and resurrection. And as a sign of forsaking sin and walking in the newness of life. Lord, give them an opportunity to do so. Lord, also we pray for our church leaders that you may also visit them with your grace this afternoon. Lord, we pray for each and every one of us and all our family members represented here that, Lord, you may visit our families, that, Lord, you may cast out all spirits of confusion, all spirits of bitterness, that, Lord, love may abound in our homes. Now, as we disperse, we go to a world that is not friendly. We pray that may you keep us by your grace. Lord, we pray that your angels who excel in strength, may they be our guardians. Let your Lord and staff lead us, even in the valley of the shadow of death, be with us, Lord. Even in the plain land, be with us, Lord. Even in the mountains of life, be with us, Lord. Now, we pray that, Lord, you be with us. You help us. Above all, continue speaking to our hearts. Convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Help us, Lord, that we may walk in the path that you are allotted us to walk in. For all these things we ask, believing and trusting in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior and soon coming King. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. Beneath his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet.